Thank you. क्या हाल है अलहमद ला सर ठीक हो यस सर प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योर सर टू ऑल ऑफ अस अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई एम मोहम्मद आफताब मुनीर सन ऑफ हवालदार रिटायर्ड मोहम्मद मुनीर आई हेल एंड आई हेल फ्रॉम डिस्ट्रिक्ट रावलपिंडी आई हैव बीन बोर्न एंड रेज्ड इन रावलपिंडी आई हैव फाइव सिब्लिंग्स एंड आई हैव डन एज फॉर माय एजुकेशन इज कंसर्न आई हैव डन माय स्कूलिंग एंड हायर स्कूलिंग फ्रॉम रावलपिंडी आई हैव डन माय मैट्रिकुलेशन फ्रॉम आर्मी पब्लिक स्कूल एंड कॉलेज रावलपिंडी एंड माय प्री इंजीनियरिंग एफएससी प्री इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम फौजी फाउंडेशन कॉलेज I have done my graduation from University of Engineering and Technology Taxila in Civil Engineering. I graduated in 2020. I was part of societies in the UET. In UET, one was Institute of Civil Engineers, which was mainly a co-curricular based society, and it organized events related to civil engineering. And I was also a part of a Khawat Foundation. It was a uh, it was a society which whose main focus was on uplifting or providing aid to uh, to the students who don't who, who do not have means. to cater their education poor children in the area or in the vicinity of taxila i have done two internships one with wadda water and power development authority in faisalabad and the second internship was with frontier works organization and during this during the course of my degree and these internships what i learned was problem solving and taking and the decision making skill skills and the leadership skills which i catered and managed and learned during the my during uh, the activities which i done with the societies and managing the aids distribution programs i have i, I have keen interest with, in traveling as well as playing table tennis and playing card games i have been to different parts of the country i i i still have a dream to travel across the country unfortunately that i haven't been able to still do that but i have traveled across the country in different parts in northern areas as well as southern parts of the country and hailing from a humble family the main the main focus and i have seen my father my father struggling and working day and night tireless efforts to see his children be be successful in their lives i have three elder sisters who are married and my father wanted them to become a csp or you know uh, in a, to go in a prestigious service and my father uh, my ancestors they belong from district gujrawala they were living in a rural background but my father migrated during his job he shifted to the city to rawalpindi to just to get his children educated and to see them successful and uh, now i am my father also wanted me to after my sisters he wanted me to join the civil services so to cater his dream and it was also by passion as well seeing my a far a far cousin he is also in psp he is serving in police service of pakistan i was also passionate to join the civil services and to pay back to my father to the to the society and to the people In, at the grassroots level as well as work on my personal growth and skills as well thank you sir thank you you hail from rawalpindi district yes sir i have you live here yes sir and you have done your civil engineering yes sir can you give us the profile of district rawalpindi sir how you see it sir district rawalpindi is mainly divided into seven tehsils it is further divided into seven tehsils namely gujar khan kahuta kalar saida kotli satya gujar uh, rawalpindi taxila and mari Uh, it's the importance of rawalpindi in the current scenario is that it's a garrison city the presence of army and the presence of military headquarters general headquarters of army this it gives a major uh, major priority and a major benefit to the city of rawalpindi it's also the neighboring city of islamabad our capital where the civilian government has a has the secretariat and as far as the importance of rawalpindi is concerned it's important for the country on two perspectives in the tourism sector it hails and it provides the opportunities for ancient tourism in the in the form of taxila where we have ancient buddhist sites and the gandhara civilization and also provides opportunities for alpine tourism in the in the tehsils of kotli satya and mari what are the challenges pakistan economy the economy is facing at the moment so the first and foremost challenge that the pakistan economy is facing right now is the budget deficit it currently amounts to 3 2.9 trillion pkr and Uh, it's the main issue of the budget deficit is because we we are not earning as much as our expenditures are and we cater to those the difference by acquiring loans from different companies or from different organizations and our neighbor and our friend countries the second major issue that the pakistan's economy is facing is the trade deficit we do not import we do not export that much the way we are importing our trade deficit is currently sitting at 3 billion dollars according to the state bank of pakistan which is a huge amount in itself and it's the main cause of it is that we are uh, 
the main uh, our electricity generation we are getting we are we used hydrocarbons and we are not a manufacturing country of hydrocarbons we import hydrocarbons so it's a major setback on our part so what we need to do to cater trade deficit is that work on our industrialization and promote our own services um, made in pakistan we should use products that are made in pakistan and catered or uh, to serve our industries so that they are self sufficient and they are in, they are at that at that level so that they can do exports and make a big part in our country and the in the exports the third issue that we are currently facing is currency depreciation or the current dollar rate is it stands around 172 which was 127 at when the current government started so it's also a major issue that, that the pakistan economy is facing right now and another economic challenge that pakistan is facing currently right now is the circular debt it's a uh, circular uh, well I, i would like to explain what circular debt is here circular debt is that when you do not have when you not earn that much the uh, the amount you are you are spending to generate the electricity and the hydrocarbons or the other needs of the country gas included what is the contribution of uh, agriculture sector in pakistan economy uh, sir agriculture is the biggest sector of our economy it plays the biggest part in our economy it currently in percentage term you can tell us uh, sir it's approximately 40% in current if i remember go and check up yes sir i'll check that Bec- uh, it's a major uh, as i said it's a major part i will check about the current uh, stats but because we are an agri- agri- agrarian country and the, our biggest asset is agriculture so it has a big part to play currently uh, unfortunately we are the agriculture sector is facing many issues because of the rapid urbanization the villagers are leaving because of the poor facilities in the villages they are leaving the agriculture sector and they are moving to cities to go in the industrialization sector and we are also making real estate sector uh, to grow at the expense of our agriculture sector and we have seen the results what is the concept of philosophy of uh, of the government sir when they fix spot price of some some crops say wheat or uh, sugar cane why the, they do it sir so they do it uh, to first to set a benchmark in the country of that particular product so that the people who are general masses they are at ease or in buying that product and the uh, the industry the industry of that uh, particular object for example wheat the so that they do not monopolize the price according to the supply and chain demand the government fix so that there is a certain benchmark for the public to access those commodities okay you tell us five major events in your view during the last 10 months sir of this year global global sir the first major event was the uh, selection of uh, new sele- uh, new election of president joe, Bi- joe biden in the united states of america is uh, is holding the office and followed by capitol hill attacks by the followers of president trump the second event uh, which we can term is the rapid escalation of coronavirus disease across the globe and the third major event that happened was the signing of aukus pact australia united kingdom and united states pact with uh, with australia for provision of nuclear powered submarines and helping in them helping them in cyber security as well as artificial intelligence and the fourth major event that happened is the middle east crisis that is again escalating right now uh, because of uh, the the issue of is- israel United States president has recently com- uh, commented on the Israel issue and the we- annexation in the West Bank that Israel is currently doing and it's building new houses and new facilities for its resident the US president has recently commented on it and lamented the uh, lamented the activity of the Israeli government that's the fourth biggest uh, scenario that has happened in 2021 and the fifth one is uh, the Ol- Tokyo Olympics which recently happened in Japan I'm sorry ko bhul gaya the rogue state of americans have been defeated in afghanistan bhul gaye sir afghan pakistan and dubai mein cricket match cricket match that was uh, woman national that was a national level but yes of afghanistan they were international ho gaya sir <laughs> you know you tell us national event five national event yes sir recollect the first one uh, we also faced the covid we also we were also strictly facing the covid and the covid vaccination uh, surge that it was going in our country it's the first step that happened in our country second is the attack on the hazara community in balochistan which happened that's the second incident that happened in our country the third one was the creation of rahmatullah alamin authority for the propagation of the teachings of our holy prophet peace be upon him 
the fourth uh, activity that happened in our country uh, is the recent uh, recent normalization of or uh, normalization of the talks between the TLP and the government, which in which they pacified the issues of the TLP and a committee is being formed to further pacify the issues. And the fifth major event that happened in our country is that we are facing and we are giving humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. Uh, we given we have already provided three to four uh, times the humanitarian aid in Afghanistan for uh, for the general Thank nurses. You, sir. Uh, how, uh, in your view, the government has handled the TLP situation yes. issue? At first, uh, they were uh, they were trying to drag, uh, they were trying to confront with the TLP, which uh, which would have which would not have been a very wise policy because it, it would have been led to a civil war uh, to the escalation of issues and creating violence in the country. The recent uh, development that has happened that they have formed a committee of religious scholars as well as uh, as well as individuals from the government and they have held talks with the TLP with the leader of the TLP Saad Rizvi and the, the issue has been uh, peacefully resolved upon some uh, but what are the on what terms and conditions uh, so the issue the, has been resolved so the terms and conditions have not yet been uh, revealed what what is being said what is being debated uh, so the main what issue, is coming into the press yes the main thing the com that is coming into the press is that uh, the government the, the 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 main issue that the public and perceived was that the uh, sending back the foreign ambassador to its country but it's it's recently been revealed by the by one of the members of the committee who was resolving the issue that it the TLP was not demanding to, to send send back the ambassador of France the main issue they were saying that we should uh, release the prisoners that were being held of TLP the leader of the TLP should be uh, acquitted or should be uh, should be uh, get out of the jail and the second thing they were contesting was that the government should, if it... Do you think all those who were involved yes, sir. in uh, taking the law into their own hands and firing at the police, sir. killing, martyring so many policemen, sir. they should be they should be released? Uh, sir, at, while taking, there are two perspectives to see this approach. First, from, the, from this perspective that the government has just... Uh, catered to their demand and it has accepted a defeat in in a term we can say that they have released the prisoners who are attacking the uh, who are attacking the policemen straight fires they were doing but the second perspective is that in the current scenario to avoid any further escalation or to avoid any further violence this was the only issue that we could have uh, been resolved by uh, releasing the prisoners who were being catered and so that the, there is no more violence in the so there will be no end to it then tomorrow again they will they will uh, uh, create another issue, they will uh, hold sir. another rally or yes. something. Saad Rizvi's sir. release they want. Sir. They they want all the prisoners uh, who were arrested, cases registered against them to be uh, to be released. Sir. So, sir, so if I government think, uh, buckles sir, down. Sir. sir, I think uh, the government should approach this issue in the way that it should release those who are not creating some serious violence and the ones who are at, who are who are actually involved in the killings of the policemen i think they should not be acquitted they should be held to trial they should be given to the courts and let's see what the court decides for them what are global carbon sinks global carbon sinks sorry sir i don't know about that global carbon sinks uh, sir where the carbon is going the, all the carbon is going carbon is being absorbed. Yes, sir. There, there are global carbon sinks sir. where most of the car carbon emitted uh, it is being absorbed. If they, these sinks were not there, uh, you see, then uh, sir, there would have been a lot of uh, quantity sir, of carbon. The, the first ones are the natural sinks that we have in the form of forests. The trees, the tree cover, the forest cover that no, we have. Okay. Yes, sir. That is there. That is in general terms. Yes, sir. But there are specific uh, sir, places I have, where. Sir. I haven't read about it. I will look into it, sir. How do you see the quality of governance uh, in our country? The quality of governance currently is uh, is a mixed approach. The current uh, the current government is doing good at some areas, and it's not doing very well in in certain major areas. Uh, as far as the issue of the foreign policy is concerned, in, the government is doing some good steps as far as providing humanitarian aid to Afghanistan and uh, as highlighting the issues. Of Islamophobia as well as the climate change and the issues of, and the steps of India it has taken, but at the domestic level it has failed. Uh, it it is failing to provide the employment uh, to provide the employment to the young generation. The employment rate has decreased. 
the the unemployment rate it was 4.6 in 2018 when the government uh, when the government was selected uh, was elected but currently it sits at 4.8 percent according to the world bank the unemployment rate in pakistan it has surged but main but the main focus of pti government the current government was providing of 50 million jobs to the youth but it has failed to do so in the in the governance area and secondly in the maintenance of uh, the central province relations it is also uh, having a bad turns with the same okay. province. How important is the working of a police station in the police department? Sir, the police station is the, is the fundamental part of the, of the working of a police department. It, it, there are being certain reforms have been taken in, the, in this regard. For example, the ease of issuing FIRs, it, it was previously a very hectic procedure to get an FIR registered, but currently it is the facilitations are being provided uh, under the reforms which the government have taken that the FIR's registration process has been eased and the general masses, they were earlier, they earlier feared to go to a police station because they knew that their FIRs won't be registered just because of political pressures or political activities that the politicians have influence on the on the SHOs or on the uh, policemen, but now that under the reforms, there have been the government are now more willing to go to the stations to get their FIRs registered. What reforms, uh, sir? For example, uh, previously it uh, they were uh, they had to provide a proper proof for uh, the FIR to get registered. What provisions sir? are there in the uh, police order 2002 uh, to improve the working? Sir, I haven't read the, the police order 2002. I will. I will read it, sir. That is your second choice. Yes, sir. I will read about it. And uh, uh, finally, uh, is our constitution rigid or flexible? Pakistan constitution. Uh, sir, uh, the previous two constitutions were rigid, the, but the current uh, the current constitution is more it's uh, more towards flexible side. As we have seen already, twenty six amendments have been made. It's uh, uh, it's easier to now make any amendment because of uh, there we require half a simple majority in the lower house and two third majority in the upper house and then the consent of the president to make amendment. So it's a bit flexible in this regard when we compare it to the previous two constitutions. Um, after yes, uh, foreign service is your third, third choice. Yes, ma'am. What do you expect a foreign service officer's job to be? Uh, the main job of a foreign service officer is to represent his country and his and, the, and to represent the national interest of the country while being posted as an ambassador or as a secretary uh, or as a, whatever he as he posted is in in the respective country wherever he's posted he has to represent what what the uh, national interest of his country and how he can promote those national interests and while he's serving in the country he has to form policies so that uh, what uh, in what at what terms we are engaging with other nations or with international organizations uh, the u.s withdrawal from afghanistan do you think it was hasty or was it planned <coughs> and what were the dynamics in u.s uh, domestic politics the u.s withdrawal from afghanistan it's a, it was a hasty process it was a hasty process it was earlier planned it was earlier uh, under the Trump era. It was to be done by May 2021, but with the office, but with the taking of office of Joe Biden, he he decided and he was plan. He had the plan to delay the withdrawal for for some time. But under the circumstances circumstances that Afghanistan that was ongoing in Afghanistan, the U.S. had made a decision of hasty withdrawal because it was no more effective for them to stay in Afghanistan. And the current and the domestic situations in uh, in the country in the United States were that the general masses of the, uh, of the people who were earlier very willing to, uh, to send their forces to the Afghanistan to fight for them. They were now, they were now devastated. They, were knew, they knew that their funds are just being wasted. There is no more result for them and they were pressurizing the government to do the withdrawal. How do you see the future of uh, the Taliban government? Then the future of Taliban government is depending upon two to three things. The first thing is that they have they have to manage the challenges they are they currently they are facing the internal challenges as well as the external challenges that they are facing at the internal at the internal scenario or the ground they are facing the challenge of form, forming an inclusive government in which the ethnic minorities as well as the gender minor as well as women who are a major part of the country they are given a due right in the in the process of government making the second issue they are facing currently is the economy of Afghanistan it's in dilapidated condition. Earlier, 75% of the needs of the country, of the economic needs of country, they were provided by Afghanistan and the NATO nations. 
but they are not providing any more and also the 9 billion dollar reserves of the central bank of afghanistan they are also being frozen and the investors they have just evaded the country and there is no more investment in the country so the economy of afghanistan is in dilapidated condition and the afghans afghan masses they are serving because of it there is rising inflation and unemployment in the country and the third issue that they are facing currently right now is the divide within the taliban there are there are some moderate taliban and then there are rigid taliban who want cert, strict islamic policies because they are uh, their anticipation of islam is that islam is a rigid religion and they want to implement those strict policies but the, but those at the helm of affairs they are a bit moderate and they are of the view that we can uh, provide some uh, some soft measures to the general masses and uh, at the external at the external board, uh, arena they are facing the issue of getting recognized by the international community as well as getting financial aid from the country so that they can avoid any civil war in the country if they are uh, if the if the current situation continues there is every chance of a civil war erupting out which will affect the stability of afghanistan and not only uh, not only it will be restricted to afghanistan it will disseminate to pakistan and the region as a whole as well so the taliban for the taliban to have a stable government they need to cater to these challenges thank you do you know anything about cryptocurrencies uh, no ma'am i haven't read it about cryptocurrency I will look into it. Do you know anything about COP twenty six? Yes, ma'am. COP twenty six is mm -hmm. uh, COP stands for uh, Conference of Parties. It's the twenty sixth conference, which was planned under the United Nations Framework on Convention on Convention of Climate Change. It's a meeting which is being held uh, in Glasgow, Scotland. It it is to be scheduled from thirty first of October up till twelfth of December. And the main focus of COP twenty six is to restrict. The uh, the criteria that they had set in the Paris Agreement of limiting the carbon of of limiting the temperature rise to 1.5 degrees up till the end of this century, they are uh, they are gathered to review the progress on the Paris climate as well as to plan further activities that they can do to uh, to approach and to and to fix that uh, the target that they have set for themselves. Thank you very much, Afta. So, Mr. Afta. <coughs> What is stagflation? Yes, sir. Stagflation. I don't know, sir. I have a As you just mentioned, that Pakistan's current account deficit amounts to the tune of three billion dollars right now. Yes, sir. If you are the finance minister, tell me three measures how to reduce this deficit. Current account deficit, sir. sir. The current account deficit is mainly accumulating because of our we have. Uh, extra imports than our exports. So the first step we can do is that we can, uh, uh, as we have already done, it's a short. The short term goal could be put tariffs on it, on our imports and let the economy float so that we have we have a better edge at exports. But on the coming coming towards long term policies, what we can do is that we can have uh, we can have reforms for our industries so that we can stabilize and we can strengthen our industrial sector. So that we are self-sufficient and we are capable enough to do some export, so that our current account deficit is is reduced. Secondly, we need. To if you well, let's stick to your first option. If sir. you discourage imports, sir. so don't you think that you lose your revenue targets because sir. imports you get duty, you get GST, you get sir. income tax. Sir. So these two goals are mutually contradicted. Yes, yes, sir. So how would you manage that revenue target then? Yes, sir, exactly. That's target. Uh, we can cater to that as by uh, providing a, providing a friendly environment to the investors. We can have foreign direct investment in our country, which is currently very limited. But in different other parts of world, India is current the foreign direct investment in India it amounts to forty five percent of their GDP currently. But we we are approximately having one to two percent of our GDP the foreign direct investment. So we could encourage the foreign foreign investors to come into Pakistan and invest in our special economic zones which we are building under the. CPEC authority. CPEC. From the start of 18th century till the end of 19th century, name two, three, four Muslim influentials who influenced Muslim society and the masses. It was firstly Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. He was uh, he was a he was a uh, educationist as well as he was a philosopher. Uh, he was a mass activist. He was a populist lead, uh, leader in the in the subcontinent. He worked for Muslims uh, for the education of the Muslims. And he was his main focus was that Muslims should first get education and then they should come toward politics and they should uh, not indulge in politics straight away because next uh, said so the next one is uh, Shah Waliullah his contribution towards uh, Islam and towards politics he, he translated the Quran in Persian he was the first one to do so what was the name of that uh, book 
sir i don't know that okay next person and the third personality that uh, impact uh, that has an impact on the country or on the religion or the whole we can term is that sir up, up till 19th century at the end of 19th century uh, sir it can be sorry if i can't you number it's okay personality. thank you challenge let's conclude this uh, test this into this interview so you need to make a lot of improvement sir usme ye hai ki your good introduction tumhara thoda sa lengthy ho gaya hai theek hai sir usko thoda sa short kar lo theek hai na wo koi zyada lengthy ho raha hai theek hai sir your intelligent hai personality hamari theek hai communication skills jo hai tumhare aap theek hai theek hai sir matlab but you need to practice before mirror sir shishe ke samne khade ho ke roz akhbar utha ke theek hai koi article leke padho theek hai you are confident because your knowledge has improved knowledge sir. is good theek hai na aap keep it up mirror practice tumhare 30 minute daily karoge sir ye tumhare liye nuskha hai theek hai sir newspaper reading roz daan ya newspaper leke end tak padho और मतलब रिमेन इन स्टेट ऑफ प्रिपेयरनेस ठीक है सर तो करंट ट्रेंड क्या है सवाल कैसे पूछे जा रहे हैं खबर मिली है टोकन क्वेश्चन सुना है तो फिर आप टोकन तैयार कर लो मतलब टोकन की तो फिर लिमिट वो नहीं बचती बंदा मतलब तो क्या है टोकन क्या है क्या टोकन होती है 200 साल की हिस्ट्री है मेन मेन चीजें हैं वो भी सारे बूढ़े लोग हैं उनको भी याद नहीं रहते तो ठीक कर लो ना ठीक है सर अठारह से याद करो ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है जंग आजादी ठीक है सर फ्रीडम वार ठीक है अठारह सौ सत्तावन में कौन कौन उसमें सरखेल थे ठीक है सर ठीक है कांग्रेस कब बनी ठीक है वेन इट वॉज एस्टेब्लिश मुस्लिम लीग कब बनी ठीक है यही है मतलब जो इंडो पाक हिस्ट्री है ये तो हो जाती है हो जाती है एटीन ये वाली हो जाती है मुश्किल क्या है प्रिंसली स्टेट वो पूछ रहा है ये प्रिंसली स्टेट्स भी हो जाती है मतलब अब जो मैंने क्वेश्चन देखे मेरा यूएस हिस्ट्री और आईआर तो नहीं है पॉलिटिकल साइंस है और जेंडर है यूएस हिस्ट्री जो है ना यूएस तो यूएस तो मुझे करने की जरूरत है शैतान है यूएस हिस्ट्री भी तो यूएस हिस्ट्री भी करने की जरूरत है इनकी यूरोपियन हिस्ट्री भी थोड़ा थोड़ा हां तो ये तुम्हें याद रखना चाहिए उसको पढ़ लो ना ठीक है सर तो एक देखो पांच उसकी जो है ना आइडेंटिफाई कर लो जो मेजर इवेंट है ठीक है सर ये मेजर उनके जो है प्रेजेंट रिमेम्बर फाइव सर की इनका कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन सिविल वार सिविल राइट एक्ट है ठीक है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन है रेवोल्यूशन था उनका डिस्क्रिमिनेशन का लॉ है वोट ऑफ वेमेन को तो अब उन्होंने वोट दिया हमने तो बहुत पहले सर ठीक है ना ठीक है सर तो फिर उनको यहाँ उनको बताओ कि जी इनको नॉर्थ कोरिया में जब गए वहाँ भी उधर वियतनाम में भी इनको जूते पड़े अफगानिस्तान में जूते पड़े लोगों को तबाह करके चले जाते अपनी इंडस्ट्री चलाए ठीक है बी वेरी क्रिटिकल सर इन योर ओन वे यार सर ठीक है आप बताए सर और दूसरा आपका नॉलेज क्या बड़ा है आपको पुलिस के के बारे में मैंने पढ़ना था पुलिस वाले एरिया मैंने भी नहीं पढ़ा कोई आइडिया नहीं है पुलिस का पुलिस आपने सेकंड चॉइस दी हुई है ये पे मैंने पढ़ना है हाँ बिल्कुल और ये क्लाइमेट चेंज के बारे में देखो ये ग्लोबल सिंग्स में जाकर देखें ये वो है आर्कटिक है वो जो ग्लेशियर्स जो हैं वो सारा आर्कटिक रीजन जो है और फिर ये वो रेन फॉरेस्ट जो है उधर रेन फॉरेस्ट ब्राजील ब्राजील बिगेस्ट रेन फॉरेस्ट अभी अभी ये है कि ये कार्बन सिंक्स की बजाय दे हैव स्टार्टेड ए मिशन का कार्बन इनका वॉल्यूम इतना कम हो गया कम हो गया और जो है ना वो वो कार्बन एमिट करने कार्बन एमिट कर दिस इज यू सी थिंग्स आर गेटिंग सो डेंजरस जी आफ्ताब यू आर इंटेलिजेंट यू आर हार्ड वर्किंग जो इन्होंने बताया अपने इंटरव्यू को बेटा पॉइंट्स लिख के प्रैक्टिस करो शीशे के आगे ताकि आपको यू बिकम मोर आर्टिकुलेट और रैम्बलिंग ना करो नॉलेज गैप जो है वो आपने फिल करना है आपका इंटरव्यू कब है एटीन को एटीन को है तो आपके पास अभी दो हफ्ते हैं सो प्लीज फोकस ऑन दैट यू हैव अ नाइस पर्सनैलिटी so otherwise uh, you're fine you just a bit of effort yes, hard sir. work karo inshallah you'll do it thank you dusra aapke uh, with the uh, due apologies with the panel mere khayal mein aapki opinion developed theek hai points yes. aapke paas hai jo cheez aapko aati hai theek hai sir 
मुझे लगता है कि उसमें आपकी जो टोन है वो रोबोटिक बहुत है ठीक है ऑर्ग्यूमेंटेटिव नहीं है कन्विंसिंग नहीं है सर इट्स जस्ट लाइक अ रिकॉर्डिंग आप किसी को फोन में लाते हैं ना कि जी मतलूबा नंबर बंद है अब उस टोन में ना आपको प्यार नजर आता है ना गुस्सा नजर आता है वो एक रोबोटिक आवाज है तो अपनी टोन में थोड़ी सी जो है ना आप आ, मतलब मोनोटनी को ब्रेक करें तो वो किस तरह हो सकती है मतलब आप अपनी आवाज की जो पिच है या उसकी जो क्या साउंड की कॉल उसको आप चेंज करते हो कम करते हो ज्यादा करते हो उसमें इमोशंस लाते हो किसी वर्ड पे स्ट्रेस देते हो उसको प्रोलॉन्ग करते हो उसको थोड़ा सा ह्यूमन एलिमेंट के साथ लाओ ठीक है और दूसरा आपने कुछ चीजों को बहुत ज्यादा लर्न कर लिया हुआ कि जी हाथ हिलाना ही नहीं है ये बताया ना आपको किसी ने हाँ मैं पिछले चालीस मिनट पैंतीस मिनट से देख रहा हूँ ठीक है आपका एक अच्छा कंफर्टेबल पॉस्चर हो बट दैट डज नॉट मीन कि आपको किसी ने बांध दिया ठीक है यू शुड नॉट लुक लाइक अ रोबोट सेटिंग यू शुड नॉट साउंड लाइक अ रोबोट स्पीकिंग एट द एंड ऑफ द डे यू आर ह्यूमन उसमें एक आप अच्छा जो अपना काम कंपोज अपना सेटिंग uh, पॉस्चर है वो आप मेंटेन करो बट उसके साथ साथ आपका जो एलिमेंट ऑफ नेचुरल नेचुरलनेस वो कभी लूज नहीं होनी चाहिए ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू सर